Yu-Gi-Oh! is a game where Rogue doesn't always get upgrades in all the latest sets. But, we've actually been fortunate enough over the last couple of sets, some banlist changes, that Rogue has definitely gotten new card choices, which is really a good thing. So, we're going to be talking about the five most impactful cards that Rogue has kind of gotten the chance to see. And by Rogue, I mean like Dark Magician, you know, things like that that get the chance to sit at the dinner table now. So let's dig into these five really interesting card choices, shall we? Number one on our list of interesting rogue deck choices that you've been able to add to your strategy recently is Fist of the Unrivaled Tenny. So the reason why I'm putting this on the list is because between Phantasm Spiral and really Dark Magician getting the chance to add this to their arsenal, I've been honestly intrigued by what this card brings to the table for these rogue decks. So what we actually are seeing here is this is a beautiful card that says when your opponent activates a monster or spell or trap effect while you control a normal monster, you get the ability to negate it and destroy it. And does anybody remind, does this remind you of Champion's Vigilance, by the way? Uh, the, the counter trap card while you control a level 7 or higher monster that you get to negate something. By the way, that was really ridiculous as it is. But now, we get more synergy because when this card is destroyed, you get to bring out a monster from your extra deck. And you know those normal 10e monsters that are relatively big? Yeah, you get access to them for free, just as long as your opponent pops this. So what I'm getting at here out of this is... We've added this to the arsenal. I mean, granted, the decks that it's helping out are already at like the bottom of the tier spectrum, as it is. But any time that I can see a rogue deck get this huge benefit off of one card for the game, I think it's a win-win. Honestly, you know, rogue strategies need as much as they can actually get in the game. And I mean, this this was a good one. It kind of stinks when archetype-based cards are pulled out of their own archetype and used in other decks. But you know. That's the way Yu-Gi-Oh's been for ages now. You just splash all the best cards that you can into a deck, and you develop a winning strategy. Seeing this trap card, seeing play outside of its own archetype, is a good thing in my personal opinion. So yeah, Fist of the Unrivaled Tenyi, bringing a little bit more love back to these rogue strategies. Now, now next up on our list here is Nibiru. Now, Nibiru is this huge planet that says, oh, you've summoned five times this turn. Let's go ahead and just wreck everything that you've done. Oh, by the way, all of your monsters were wimpy. Here, take this token. Oh, and by the way, this token is probably going to not be bigger than Nibiru itself. Nibiru changed the entire dynamic of the way that Yu-Gi-Oh! is played because now you have this looming threat that is sitting there on the back burner and you're staring at it going, oh no, my opponent's counting my summons what's about to actually hit me out of left field here. And then you're just like, oh, that's my fifth summon. And then you're like at the, the climax of your combo and your opponent's like, blah. down comes the fateful rock. And you're just like, oh no. Like now I'm going to just get destroyed here as this thing, like, so I, I read some comments, people were like, oh, well, this is going to be the differentiating point for Orcos. Like, Orcus will still be able to... He hello? Like, Orcus can only play through so much. And what makes you think that your opponent's going to drop this at the point where Orcus can still combo off in the same turn? That's the question I've been wondering for a majority of this card's existence. Where are players just going, oh yeah, by the way, you know... I'm going to be bad and drop this right here in this combo when my opponent can still combo. No, you're going to go before your opponent hits end phase of their turn. You're going to drop the rock and do your thing. Now, a good player will probably set up some sort of negation post setup here. So I do think that that's something that you're going to have to be a little bit wary of. Um, you might have to d determine which point to play your rock, but rock definitely gave a lot to Rogue. And that is really sweet. Now, next up on this list is Dark Ruler No More. Now, for those of you that look at this game and you're like, ugh, you know, we didn't need a cold wave for monster effects. Yes, we did. We, it, it's so bad that, like, these build-a-board concepts 
Dark Magician should not be able to out Double Thunder Dragon, Colossus, Titan, you know, like this huge board. And now with the addition of Nibiru and Dark Ruler No More, we've now been like, okay, cool. Your rogue deck now has the chance to combat this degeneracy. You now get this crazy means to just activate this free spell card that blinks your opponent's entire field. Now, for something like Phantasm Spiral, Dark Magician, to a lesser extent, Blue Eyes, you know, having these cards that exist that just blank entire fields could be seen as degenerate, and I, I do understand that they are. It's much like how Norden did bring life back into Tier 2 decks, but it did make the Tier 1 decks even stronger. And that was an issue, don't get me wrong. But, you know, we see the balance in these cards that are just like, oh, hey, they're, they're perfectly fine in their own right. Being able to deduce and counter strategies all at the free now. I mean, if your opponent has the Called by the Grave, and you activate Dark World no more that you can call by the Grave, they can then chain the Scarlight Red Dragon Archfiend onto the beautiful, beautiful Called by the Grave, and they're going to blink your no Dark World no more. That's how that works. People don't understand, nor people read cards, but that, that's how it be how it be. So yeah, if you are in a position that you're going to just be playing a rogue deck, look at Nibiru, look at Dark Ruler no more, as these fantastic anti-meta cards that have really just blessed us by having the chance to play these in the game. So I, I, my personal two cents, both of these cards gave a lot to both sides of the game, both rogue and competitive, and we should treasure that, honestly. Now, that being said, number four on our list here is Super Polymerization. Oh, man. You thought just getting your whole board ripped away because your opponent summoned a Starving Venom Dragon is fair? Well, let me tell you about rogue strategies that are inherently bad that are going to rip your board apart by using it off of Super Poly. Oh, yeah, by the way, that's crazy cool, right? So Super Poly, in addition to all of these cards... You know, Fist added a little bit to the equation, more like for rogue balancing. These others have just been generic support. Super Poly, exactly that. You have this generic card that goes, oh, and it's gone. Where'd your board go? I don't see it anymore. You know, this card just shreds the competition, and it's insane, actually. The amount of rage quits I've seen, now, okay, I get it. You have to dedicate space in your extra deck. Well, Dark Magician can do that. Phantasm Spiral can do that. But Olshe can do that. True Draco, if they're playing the extra deck build, can do that. Well, if all these rogue decks can do this, why are we not main decking super polymerization as a means to break these boards? You know, you guys remember when Regeki, Dark Hole, Kaijus, Sphere Modes were used to break these ungodly huge boards. And you saw these terrible, terrible things that players couldn't play around? Well, we're kind of in the same situation here, but the cool thing is, now that we've been adding more and more into the equation, yeah, Rogue gets a chance to play. Like, yeah, I guess you can super poly back Rogue, but I mean, what do you really, I guess you can fuse away my two Dark Magicians into a, into a Starving Venom. I guess, <laughs> that seems good for me, bad, for, eh, I guess it's pretty good for you. Eh, super poly, ladies and gentlemen, what are we going to do? And the last card on this list is actually Appaloosa. Now, Appaloosa gave a new dynamic to the game that was not really seen before. We got this generic Link 4, by the way, Boral Sword, Boral Ode, you know, all the other good Link 4s. Appaloosa gave something to all decks. She gave a consistent means to negate monster effects. Oh, man, let me tell you about monster effects in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! And... I mean, even a 1600 Appaloosa off of a Link 2 and Link 2 together is still pretty good. You have you have a decent negate right there. Let me tell you what. I, I think people kind of underestimate really what you get the chance to do with this card. So while the card might be viewed as bad by a lot of players in Rogue, don't underestimate it because generic removal in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! is a good thing. Think about... The level of negates that you can actually set up in decks. In, I mean, in the best combo decks, you can set up, ah, oh, heck, 
you can set up at least three to four on your best case scenario. And your opponent's not going to be able to play around it because it's also going to be maintaining attack points as well on that. So let that sink in, ladies and gentlemen. Appaloosa, an extra deck monster, also added in more layers of negation. Just snap your fingers, change the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! That's what we continue to see here. Adding more and more layers onto an already complicated game, it just shows that we need to build these beautiful counter cards to the game and allow for continuation and change to this because if we don't have generic things like this i mean i know people complain about hand traps but they have to exist like the game is so high in power scaling that you just you have to do it so that's my two cents on these five cards that i think have changed the way that rogue is able to be played in the game what do you guys think please leave a comment down below tell me what you guys think well catch you guys on the flip side peace out the ride never well truly ends Thank you, patrons. Without you guys, I don't know what I'd be wearing in these videos. I might be a triple shuffle instant all over again. Guys, please also check out Vancol40 for some awesome Vanguard content. Some other interesting stuff you might find up here on the left or in the description as well. Thanks for watching.